So tonight we are going to use the census records that we uh, investigated last week. And then we have four activities using them. So our goal is to find out what you're missing and where to find it. So we're going to look for immigration information, occupation, children that might be missing, and marriage information. This is the one of the sheets that you got last week. If you didn't get it, um, it's in the chat. You can download it tonight. On the left, you see the, uh, the census years for the US federal census. And across the top are the headings of things that are found in those particular census and whether or not they're contained in that year's census. So that gets real beneficial. For example, if you're looking for immigration information, it doesn't do you any good um, to look before 1900. They're, they're, they didn't keep track of it. Um, if you're looking for occupation, don't be looking in the 1820 census. So you can save a lot of time um, and research if you know where to look and what years to look. Uh, the second sheet you got last week and is available again this week is a color coded of the census. And they're color coded so it helps you find by color the information that you're looking for. So for example, if you're looking for something related to name, it would be yellow or citizenship or naturalization, it would be kind of a brown color. So this is an example from that sheet um, showing the headings across the top of the census, which are often too small to read, um, especially on some of the uh, digital images. But it, they're color coded for this example. So all you have to do is look for say column 13 and 14 to find out about education. It's gray. So that makes um, finding it a little easier on a particular census. You'll notice the 1930, they're not all the same. So there's more occupation and industry on this one. Um, there's more about their native language, um, native languages, native um, places of birth on the 1920 census. So you have more birthplace green information. In the 1910, you, you start to get some location and home data and a lot more about occupation. So each one is a little bit different and recognizing what's on it helps us to learn more about that ancestor and some of the details that otherwise we wouldn't know. So activity one tonight, or the first challenge, is going to figure out if your ancestor that you've chosen was an immigrant. If they were, you're going to want to look at the 1900, 1910, 1920, 1930, or 1940 census. And you're going to want to record the information that you find onto family search. So for example, in the 1940 census, we're looking for citizenship or naturalization, kind of a brown color on our color code. So we're looking in column 16. And it would list it. In 1930 census, you're going to have four columns to look at. Um, what language at home before the United States? What year of immigration to the United States? Are they natural, naturalized and do they speak English? So a little bit more information about um, their travels to this country. In the 1920 census, you get a year of immigration to the United States, whether they're naturalized or alien, and what year they were naturalized. Our second goal tonight will be to figure out what our ancestor's occupation is or was. Occupation information will be in purple. 
So in the 1940, you'll notice there's quite a few columns that deal with employment status. Whether they work for pay, whether they're seeking work, um, how much they work, what their occupation is, the class of worker, the number of weeks that they work and their income. Activity three is to figure out how many children were born to the family. Now, several census records help us learn um, how many are born and how many are still living. It's an amazing way to um, double check your family relationships and to find any missing children. Occasionally, there will be families that have children born and then they pass away before the next census. And so if they're born between census and they don't make it to the following census, remember US census, federal census are every 10 years, there would be no record of those children unless they specifically ask how many are living. So for example, in the 1910 census, you look at the headings that are in blue one of them, column 11, for the mother says number of children born, and column 12 says number of children living. If those two numbers are not the same, you have a missing child. And our final activity or challenge for the week is to look on several census records and learn about marriage information. Some census taker, takers reported it if it was a second marriage. It may also list how old they were when they were married or how many years they have been married. So be sure you figure out what it is that's listed and you look at the headings. Many times marriage records are difficult to find, but if we know whether they were married or not, so in 1920 it just says whether they're married, single, widow, or divorced, then we can kind of guess and, and estimate um, when, they, when they did get married. So census records are a gold mine of valuable data to help in our research. And so this is a copy of the worksheet for this week with the four activities. We're going to stop this share and go to a different live view. Let's try this one. Okay, a um, couple of things I wanted to point out. Have you guys seen the new volunteer opportunity? It is standardizing. So not only can you do it from your phone, you can do it right on Family Search. They give you 10 uh, places um, and you can help others with their research. So if you haven't checked that out, you'll want to check that out. All right, let's look at Henry Maven. We're going to go to his person page. Actually, we're going to go to his sources. And, we're, well, let's, let's start with his, learn a little bit about him. So Henry here was born in England. He died in Salt Lake, so he had to get here somehow. Um, so we come down, we've got quite a few custom events going on here. And as we get down here, he had a couple of wives and quite a few children. One adopted and a bunch down here. So we're going to go up to his sources and we're going to see if we can find the census. Now you remember from last week, if we hit control F, it brings up this box, and I'm going to type in census. It tells me that it is one of nine records. So I have an 18. The first one will be orange. So I have an 1880, and I can scroll through. So I have an 1880, an 1870, an 1851, which is an English census. An 1870, an 1880, 
let's look at the 1881. Let's go back up one. Oops, wrong screen. That, sorry, that thing is right in my way for my scrolling. That's the one I want right there. Okay, so we're going to go to view the source. We're going to look at it. Remember, with an, we always want to look at an original if we can. Okay, this is the 1880 census. So we're gonna scroll in a little bit. And we're gonna see what we learn about Henry. Goal is to find him. Okay. So William Henry is right here. Oh, that's not him. Never mind. Oh, there he is. Henry's down here. Okay. We learn. We've got names here. We've got ages. We've got relationships. Then we learn that the next one combination tells us what he what his occupation was. What he was doing, he was a clerk in a store. His wife was keeping house. His son was a painter. Um, his other children were just at home. We learned that um, they were born in England. Um, mother was. Uh, the wife was born in Belgium. So we learned, we learned some things there. Now the, the point to all of this is not only do we learn this, but is this information also in family search? We have the census attached, the sources attached, but we want these people to be more than names and faces. We don't want just to check off their ordinances and be done with them. We want to make sure that the families are complete and that we have as much information as we can. So when we go back to Henry's page and we go back to his details, we want to go into his other information and we want to make sure that, oh, um, that we have immigration information. So we do have those. We don't have, um, I am not seeing. Okay, clerk in a drugstore, there it is. So the occupation information is there. But for each of these activities, you want to make sure that that source, the information that was on the source is provided in the information. So we have a marriage and I've already checked the children and the children did line up. Okay, let's go back here. Okay, so again, our challenges this week, select a deceased grandparent or great-grandparent, go in and see if there's immigration information on them. Um, remember, immigration takes um, various forms. You can't be naturalized without do, if you see the letters PA, it's papers of intent. I don't know why the A is there. 
preliminary acceptance maybe. If you see NA, they are naturalized, so you can look for um, court papers of their immigration and naturalization. You want to make sure that if an occupation is listed, that that is added to family search. You want to make sure that the number of children lines up and that the names line up with each census. And you want to confirm marriage information. And if you need help, here are your resources. Okay, questions. I found my I found my grandpa's naturalization papers a couple weeks ago. They're way cool, aren't they? They are. They are. I'm surprised at the number of individuals that start the process. It takes several years, but they start it and they never finished. That's that's always surprised me as well. Okay, any other questions? No. Okay. Good luck with your challenge for the week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank Have a good you. night.